Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining me today. Sorry I wasn't able to do it last week, but I had some personal stuff going on that I needed to take care of. Anyway, I'm back this week and fresh. Uh, today's sermon is titled, Rise Up. And it's funny, I got the title for this sermon before I started to, um, before I woke up this morning, and this morning, one of the songs on the radio was Rise Up by Parachute Club, so that was kind of, um, a confirmation on my title. Um, so, um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done, I thank you for what you're, what you're about to do. I thank you for what's stirring in the atmosphere, God. I thank you just for being who you are. I just thank you that you are. We often attribute uh, things to you. It's because of this why we love you. It's because of that why we love you. And what I'm learning now is I love you just because you are. Just because you are God, just because you are my life, just because you are my source of strength, just because you are my being. I give you the praise and give you the glory. Fill my mouth with your words, oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, um, I was, as I said, the sermon is called Rise Up. And I was thinking about everything I went through last week and I also was thinking about everything I went through last year and in the midst of the chaos of last week personal uh, thing I was going through um he just said rise up this situation, Rachel, will cause you to rise up. It may seem hard right now, and it's hard for a moment and hard for a day. And if I would, but you will rise up. And I was so mired, if I can be transparent for a moment, I was so mired in like, okay, what am I going to do? I need to solve this. I need to solve this. I tried to solve it myself and only and almost got myself into a deeper mess than I was in if I had only asked for help. Like, but the Lord knew better than I I did. Um sometimes you can be too independent for your own good and you ask for what you need. You don't tell anybody that you're needing help and that's the kind of person that I am. I think it's because in my everyday life I need help with so much that um, I, with things that are seen, so sometimes the unseen stuff that I need help with is just like I have a hard time asking because I need so much physical help that sometimes the financial help, spirit, spiritual help, emotional help, I feel bad asking because for me I should be able to deal with this myself and it's that whole world thing. When I talked about the lie of autonomy, that's where that came from because that's what I'm working on in my life ask and share my burdens with people um but sometimes trust could be an issue and it could be to what 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 the lord wants to do in your life um or lack of trusting people to help you could be a blocker and if i had just reached out sooner as soon as the situation happened, it wouldn't have messed me up so bad. Isn't it 
is it funny that um we try to do this do these things on our own try and live our life on our own and be independent um while the lord is saying you need to not only depend on me but you need to depend that I place the right people around you to help you. And you need to ask for, your, for help from your family, from your friends, and whatever. So that's the key thing. If I had just asked for help, told people what was going on, allowed people to share the burden with me, then I wouldn't have gotten into that situation. Um, I was in church one day and the pastor was talking about he was being transparent too when he said he had a tremendous pain in his shoulder and he went to, I don't know if it was his trainer or chiropractor and the trainer, I think it was his trainer his trainer said, you should have told me sooner. It wouldn't have hurt so bad if you had told me sooner. And the Lord saying, sometimes in order to rise up, you need to reach out first. The Lord is saying, sometimes in order to rise up, you need to reach out. And he is he is saying that to somebody he's saying the reason why you can't get up up out of your mess he's saying i have provided the people around you to allow you to rise up but you're not saying anything you're not reaching any anything and you're not reaching out and people don't know if you, that unless you talk and like like you're saying no i'm fine praise the lord no you're not fine you're dying you're killing yourself you need to reach out you know you're dying you know you need help and the lord's saying stop being so stubborn and ask for help sometimes people know the help you need and you don't because sometimes you suppress things so much that you don't even realize that you need help and and sometimes the people that God has placed around you like your family and, and your close friends will help you if you just reach out that's what I learned last week. And there's the other side of the coin too. There are people that ask for so much help that they become needy and they become leeches that grab onto people and suck them, suck them dry. And the Lord is saying to those people, stop being a leech and stand. The is saying to those people stop being a leech latching on to people and and sucking the life out of them sucking the blood out of them and stand on your own you can you can he'll be there to back you up you've you've been you've been a heavy weight to people for too long and you're wondering why people don't take your calls. You're wondering why people don't want to have anything to do with you anymore because, because they don't want to have anything to do with you anymore because every time they do, you want and need something and never give. I said a few minutes ago that you have to ask for help when you need it. But if you're constantly needing help, needing money, and needing support, needing this, and you don't give it back, 
you're a leech and you're sucking people dry. Stop it and stand. Stop stop being a leech and stand. Stop su sucking the blood life and the very blood from people and stand up. You can rise up. He's given you the ability to rise. One of the key things that the Lord shows us by the cross is that with every death there is an ability to, to rise up. With every death, I'm not talking about physical death, because of course, once you're dead, you're dead. Um, except for Jesus and Lazarus. But usually, once you're physically dead, you're dead. But when it comes to spiritual death, emotional death, any kind of other death besides physical, the cross teaches us we can rise up and he's saying you can rise up you don't have to stay in pain you don't have to stay in hurt you don't have to stay there he's given you the ability to rise up he's given you the tools you're praying for the tools that you that you already have he's given you the mouth to speak he's given you the words to say to say but all you have to do is step up i know you're afraid i know it's scary you're you're like i don't know what the heck i'm doing neither of us do you need to just step out i know it's difficult i know it's difficult believe me but sometimes, sometimes you just need to do it. You've read enough books, you've read enough scripture verses, you've heard enough inspirational sermons, you've got enough, you've got more signs than a signpost. But sometimes you just need to step out and do it. And sometimes the greatest things don't feel right to do, but they are right to do. You just have to step out and sometimes you you will fail and sometimes you don't. But sometimes failure is the beginning. Failure is the beginning of success because in every in every uh, seed of uh, in every uh, every failure, there's a seed of success. That that way might have failed, but in that way, there's a there's a seed of success. So to to put it. To put it lightly, um, I had a business, uh, a production company uh, that went under a movie production company. I didn't have the skills. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I had the tools, but not knowledge. And knowledge without tools without knowledge will get you in trouble. But in that, after it closed, I learned so much that the next time I have the knowledge now because I failed. And sometimes failure is the best way to get knowledge. In the, in the garden, in the ground of failure, there are seeds of, of success. I'll say that again, that again, in every ground of failure, in every garden of failure, there are seeds of success. So every time you quote unquote fail, what is the seed of success that God is trying to teach you?
like when when I say a seed of success, my co- my company failed, but in that failure, I learned that I could. I learned how to plan a budget. I learned the best way to do a film is not to get it started right away. It's now to um, do a little film, get get that get that ramps up, and then once I get people on board my film. Then I could get it. Um, then I could uh, make it into a company, and then that company can go towards success. Um, because unless you have the capital to really sustain it, that is not a wise idea uh, to just. Put all your, put all your, put, put some money into something and spend so much money on legal counsel that you have nothing left for the film. The best thing to do is to do the film first, to do a smaller film, and then, then, while you're, when you've done the smaller film with a little budget, then you advertise it and then you get a lot of buzz about it, get people to share it. And then when you come out with your next thing now, you have thing, something to show people. So in that seed of fail, in that garden of failure, the seed of success about how to start a company was there. If I didn't fail, I wouldn't know what I did wrong. And, and I wouldn't know how to sustain a company. And I wouldn't know how to get knowledge from people that have already done what I want to do. I was watching something from the Potter's House. Um, And the head of his film company gave an interesting talk of how to have uh, entertainment and ministry in the same vein. And he talked about how to separate them and what things you should do and what things you shouldn't do. It was awesome. And because I want to do something like that with the church, and the film company, he's he did great tools on how to do it. And I was so grateful. And when it comes around again, I will do it. I I will um do what he said. So every with every garden of failure. There are seeds of success. And the Lord is asking, what is the seed of success today that is in your failure? And the Lord is saying, rise up and take it. Take back a world that is dying. He's like, take back what the devil stole from you. Take back your finances. Take back your peace. Take back your family. What are the what are the seeds of success in your garden of failure? A lot of people have been stuck in the same place for so long. And the Lord is saying, what? The Lord is saying, get out. Get out, you've been stuck there for too long. He's like, like, I have so much more for you. You're saying that it's over for you. You're saying that it's too old. You're too old. 
you're saying that it's too late. As long as you're breathing, it is never too late to achieve what God has planned for you. He will fight valiantly for you, but you need to take the first step forward, which is going to school, which could be um, taking a course, which could be talking to uh, somebody who's in the industry that you are in, that you want to be in. It could be, it could be taking step, whatever steps you need to take to do whatever God has called you to do. It could be reading a book. It could be like me watching a YouTube video. A lot of people say things about social media, but if you're resourceful, you can find so much good information on social media too. And for, ev for everything you're going through, there is a group that can help you. For everything, there is a Facebook group. Uh, for everything, there is a YouTube video. Um, and you could ask the person that's in charge of the channel. You could ask them questions. You can suss them out and make sure they're reliable because there are, there are reliable things and there are unreliable things. There are weeks and there are tears as the Bible calls them and we grow and we grow together. The Lord is calling the church to rise up. The Lord is saying to the the church, I need you to become violent. I need you to become violent when it comes to your peace. I need you to become dogged when it comes to your joy. I need, I need you to become ra like a rabid dog when it comes to love. I, I said a few weeks ago, I said, I said, um, the way we fight is with compassion. Compassion is not strong. It um, compassion is not weak, it's strong. And if we, if we go with the strength of compassion and the strength of love, we will be able to conquer the world. The Lord is calling us to rise like, like, like we're celebrating on this day. We're celebrating the fact that he rose from the grave and his rising taught us that we can rise too. His bleeding and his beating and his agony taught us that we can rise too. That even if we're beaten to a pulp, no one was beaten like Jesus. No one was um, put to put the score like Jesus and if he can rise up we can rise up you can say Ra you'll say Rachel he's God I'm not yes that's true but he's given you the same characteristics when you receive Christ in your life he's given you most of his characteristics so if he can create things by his words, so can you. If he can say, let there be, and there is, so can you. If he can look at things and say, it is good, so can you. If he can get out of the grave, so can you. He's given you his power on the inside of you. What you're praying for, what you're seeking for, you already have. Well, most of you, and all you have to do is activate it, act on it. 
and you activate it by worship, by prayer, by his word. Those are all activation codes. You know, lately, um, there are, you know, sometimes when I order food sometimes, they call me for an activation code. Um, you could either get it by phone or by text messages. So I get it by phone because I don't have a cell phone to text. So um, what I do is request the code and they call me. They call me and say, your code for service is this and this and this and this. And then I have to type in the code and then after that, I get access and approved for whatever I, I ordered, whether it be food or whatever. So many of you are, and a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I typed in, in the code a few weeks ago, I was, I think I was ordering food, and I requested a code, and the phone didn't ring, and I was wondering why it didn't ring. It didn't ring because a few weeks before that, I had, I said, no codes by accident. <laughs> so, that's why it didn't ring when I requested it. Because I said no one-time code. And some of, you, some of you just need to put in the code and make sure by your attitude and by your demeanor, you didn't say, oh, no codes. Um, or, or no peace, no thing. And then I didn't remember th at that point that I just requested no codes. Um, so that's why it didn't ring. A lot of you are praying, but you're not typing in the code th that he sent you, which is the code of his word is the code of prayer, is the code of praise. So, and he's like, what is the code I've given you to access what you're asking for? And he's saying, sometimes you type in the code and it's still the, sometimes you're asked for a code but it doesn't work because you've to you've told him by your attitude and by your demeanor, I don't want codes anymore. Forget it. Like I did to CIBC and I forgot I did. I forgot I clicked no more one-time codes for CIBC. So now you kind of have to change your thinking, change your demeanor to, to, to get, to tell him that, yes, Lord, I want this and here's the code. If that makes any sense. I think it does. Um, and, and he's saying, there is a code that you have to type in to access. And that code might be a scripture. And that code might be an attitude. And that code might be something else. What is the code that he told you to type in so that you can access what you need to access? And are you are you sure that you didn't click uh, no no 
codes accepted like I did or no one-time codes so that even if you ask for a code it doesn't come through. Sometimes you have to go to the source and change your demeanor, change your attitude. Sometimes that attitude is stopping you from receiving the access code. So you're praying and you're praying, but while you're praying, your attitude, forgive me for saying this, but your attitude sucks. You're like, it'll never happen for me. Because you, you want to believe, but you doubt. And he's saying, doubting is natural, but I need you to just trust me and have a little belief. Like, belief doesn't have to be big. You're not like, oh, I'm believing for the whole thing. But, but you, you can say, Lord, I want to believe, but help my unbelief. And he's okay with that. He's, he's okay with you not, not believing all the way. You don't have to believe for big things. Sometimes belief is one step at a time. Some, sometimes people can believe for big things. But sometimes some people can only believe for the little. So believe for the little first. And then you can graduate to big things. But you've got to start somewhere. You've got to start somewhere. And he is telling you right now, believe me. He's like, I know you're scared. But you can rise up. You can do what God has called, called you to do. It's not too, you're not too old and it's not too late. You can arise. I put everything in you to arise, but you just have to type in the access code of praise, the access code of worship. And then when you type in the access code, you've got to make sure that your attitude and your demeanor lines up with what you're saying. Like, it's okay to doubt, but you don't, you don't even have to believe the whole thing. You can, you can believe for a little and then work up to the whole thing. He's not asking you to, to run a country unless he's giving you the tools to run a country, why don't you start with running your own family? Run your life. Because sometimes you're asking him for the big things, but you can't even handle the little things. Sometimes you're like, oh, I wish I could win a million dollars, but you can barely handle the little check that you're receiving now from your job. How is he going to trust you with a million dollars if you can't handle the check that you're receiving right now from your job? So handle life on the level that he's given to you and he will grant you more. Handle life on the level that God has given to you and you will graduate to more. Handle life on the level that God has given it to you, and you will graduate to more. So, if you can't handle your house without kids, how do you expect to handle your house with kids? Like, God is looking at your whole life to see, can I trust this person with this? Can I trust this person with money? Can I trust this person with somebody's secrets? He's like, 
how could I trust you with the secrets of my of my word when you cannot handle a secret from your friends? Like every time you they, they tell you something, you put you put it somewhere or you talk about it with something with someone. You're asking for Oh Lord, I want the mysteries of the kingdom. Well, he can't handle, you, you can't handle the secret of your mother or your sister or whatever, and you're asking for mysteries of the kingdom? Really? So handle life on the level that God has given it to you and then you will graduate to more. Okay, Lord, and I'm telling you, whatever pain, whatever, whatever you're going through right now, he's there for you, and he loves you so much, and you can rise up, and it's not too late, and Right now, I cancel out the voices that have said, it's too late, you're done. There is no condemnation in Christ. You are not condemned. Now rise and go forward in faith, in love, in truth. And find a verse in your life you can stand on. There is a verse for every situation and there is a word for every situation. Whether it be a, vi a Bible verse, whether it be something someone has said to you, find that word and grasp it with all you got because the Lord, the Lord wants to do some wonderful things, but he's going to start with a little. Um, he is preparing a place uh, for, for you um, that is beyond your imagination. And I'm not even talking about heaven. That's one level. But uh, he's a place, he's preparing a place here on earth, a place of peace, a, pl a place of joy, and a place of love that he wants you to grasp, not in heaven, but now. Now he wants you to have all of that, because I believe heaven is a continuation of earth but on a greater level. Um, so, everything that you're waiting to, um, to experience in heaven, I believe the starting place is on earth. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience peace. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience joy. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience eradication of, of sickness. I believe that it can be on earth because the same power he's like, uh, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. So, so as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. So what most things were waiting for to get to heaven, um, the seed of them is available on earth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for making yourself available to us this day. 
In the name of Jesus, amen. Bye, guys. I'll see you next week. Take care. Uh, happy Resurrection Sunday, guys. <laughs>